Wednesday, January 28th, and here's some of the news beyond the headlines. French counterterrorism forces have arrested five suspected Islamic militants three weeks after a series of attacks killed 17 people in Paris. On Tuesday, police conducted early morning raids in the small southern town of Lunel. Interior Minister Bernard Cazeneuve said the men were between the ages of 26 and 44, and that two of them had recently returned from Turkey and Syria. Over the past year, local media has reported that as many as 20 residents of Lunel, which has a population of 25,000, have traveled abroad to fight alongside militant groups, particularly the Islamic State. Local and international agencies are responding to a plea for aid by Malawi's government, as rain hampers efforts to reach hundreds of thousands of people displaced by recent flooding. Families are taking shelter in nearby villages, where aid groups are building toilets, monitoring children for malnutrition, and providing food and clean water. Aid workers say the prevention of waterborne diseases such as cholera and malaria is a priority. One of Africa's poorest nations, Malawi announced that it had run out of its own funds allocated annually for natural disasters. Rainy conditions are expected to further complicate relief efforts in the coming weeks. A lack of international funding has forced the UN to stop payments to tens of thousands of Palestinians waiting to rebuild their homes in Gaza. Despite donor pledges of $5.4 billion, barely any progress has been made in repairing the city, which was leveled during last summer's war with Israel. Israel also tightly monitors the import of construction materials such as cement and iron to the Gaza Strip. Frustrated residents who are tired of life in temporary shelters are turning to cheaper and more accessible materials such as tin and drywall to speed up the reconstruction process. A shortage of dependable childcare is making it increasingly difficult for South Korean women to have careers. Men are offered more senior positions and spend little time at home, and the culture glorifies the stay-at-home mom. Lower wages also offer little incentive to work, with women earning about 65% of what men do. That pay gap has remained nearly unchanged for a decade. The country's first female president, Park Geun-hye, campaigned on providing women better opportunities, but her opponents say she's done little to make good on that promise. And while the government has sought to increase the number of childcare providers to address demand, few companies are willing to invest the time or money in women who are returning to work after giving birth. Check out the Vice News YouTube channel for more original reporting and documentaries from around the world.